people tend to believe. And nowadays, they'll believe anything. Welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. People will believe anything nowadays, according to Mysterio. And we're going to unpack this dense hypothesis and explore why it's so terrifying and so true. But first, we got to give credit when it's due, because Mysterio was also right about the multiverse. There are multiple realities, Peter. This is Earth, Dimension 616. I'm from Earth 833. I'm sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? This isn't going to be the focus of this video, but hey, he was right, despite lying about everything else. Good job, Bubble Boy. I'm, s I'm some kind of Bubble Boy. But let's get serious here. Mysterio's grim observation about how unreliable the truth can be is alarming, and it says so much about the current socio-political climate of our world, ours, and the MCU's. Quentin Beck sold to the people a tale of triumph about a hero who saved the world from a universe-ending threat, giving his own life in the process. People believe this narrative without question, and judging by the No Way Home trailers, the public was deceived so much that they turned on Spider-Man, buying the narrative that he killed Mysterio. There you have it, folks. Conclusive proof that Spider-Man was responsible for the brutal murder of Mysterio. This validates Beck's claim that people need to believe, and if the lie is good enough, they will embrace the narrative wholeheartedly. And once people adopt that narrative as their truth, it becomes their only truth, and then they reject any other perspective. This sets up a dangerous precedent in the MCU, where misinformation and lies become far more dangerous threats than Thanos. And on top of that, Quentin Beck might have just begun a pandemic of fake superheroes, because he has proof that all it takes is a few pretend heroic acts, some collateral damage, and a believable narrative to trick the whole world into believing that he is Earth's mightiest hero. The story you created of a soldier from another Earth named Quentin fighting space monsters in Europe is totally ridiculous and apparently exactly the kind of thing people will believe right now. I mean, everybody bought it. Quentin Beck is a bitter and resentful narcissist. He created hologram technology, believing that it would change the world. But he was fired by Tony Stark and his life's work was retrofitted into a product, Barf. He renamed my life's work, Barf. This should have been the origin story of yet another Iron Man villain. And yet, Beck flipped the tables on everyone. He created Mysterio, a superhero from another universe who has arrived to save Earth from the elementals. Now, what's so alarming about this is that Talos Fury, S.H.I.E.L.D., and everyone else believed this lie without hesitation. Now, granted, Mysterio put on a great show using holograms and visual effects to sell the narrative. But it was more than that. I mean, Beck is a master manipulator not just with his illusions, but with his lies. And it works because he told people what they wanted to believe, masterfully playing on their worst fears and self-doubts. What's going on? I know this isn't real. Do you though? Uh, uh, MJ! Uh, MJ! Uh. See, a lie is like a virus. It's transmitted with words from one person to the next. And once enough people have been infected by the virus, there's no cure. When Talos Fury believed Beck, he infected Peter with the lie. And Peter bought the narrative without hesitation because of his doubts at the time about being Spider-Man. Peter wanted to believe the lie, but also he saw Fury as the ultimate authority of the truth. If Nick Fury thinks Mysterio's tale is legit, then it must be true. People tend to trust the opinions of those they consider trustworthy. It works so well that Fury Talos saw Mysterio as the next great hero to protect the world. It's what persuaded Peter to hand Edith over to Beck. So the world needs the next Iron Man, and it's not going to be me. I mean, I'm a 16-year-old kid from Queens. It needs to be an adult with some experience, and that's good, like Tony Stark, like you. Proving Tony Stark's irresponsibility of entrusting Edith with a hormonal teenager. Beck is such an effective manipulator that he was able to convince all of those disgruntled Stark employees to help him, even if it meant killing people. Now, this is the reason why fake news has become so prominent and loud. If lies are a virus, then in the age of misinformation, the truth has diluted into nothing more than just another product. It's now a business where everyone sells their own narrative, with very little moral concern for the consequences of the vile manipulation of the facts. Not to get all political or anything. <clears throat> is no one else here interested in the truth? The very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. George Orwell. And nowadays, people care more about winning an argument or about being right than telling the truth. Because most people think that being wrong means failure and embarrassment. Instead of trying to understand the truth, they become obsessed with being right about their own narrative. That's why people need to believe, believe that they are right. 
That is why people will believe anything nowadays. And I'm talking about you, Uncle Brad. You ruined Thanksgiving for the last time. Brad and everybody who looks like Brad. <laughs> so Beck understood this perfectly because he exploited the reality of the world of the MCU because that fictional Earth has gone crazy ever since the Battle of New York. Alien invasions are the new norm. It seems like the world's at risk every week now. The extraordinary has become the mundane. That's why it's not far-fetched for people to believe that Mysterio had arrived from another universe. Beck wanted to upstage Iron Man, saving the world and even copying his sacrifice from Endgame. He capitalized on the public's fear, knowing that in the aftermath of Thanos, people just want to feel safe. In a world filled with superheroes, people end up trusting that whenever things go terribly wrong, the heroes will solve the problems and make everything better. And Mysterio played all the right notes. The Elementals attacked and he took care of it. Terrifyingly ingenious deception. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> And this isn't the first time a villain has used fake news and misinformation to achieve his goals. Aldrich Killian applied similar tactics with the Mandarin, capitalizing on America's long history of fearing the Middle Eastern boogeyman. Same with Zemo, using Bucky's history as the Winter Soldier to frame him for the UN bombing. In all of these cases, people believe the narrative because Beck, Killian, and Zemo all played on society's existing fears. And when people are afraid, they don't always think straight. They become panicked, they search for answers in the wrong places, they want to feel safe. That is when people are most vulnerable to being infected with misinformation and lies. But unlike Killian and Zemo, Mysterio didn't just present a bad guy. He gave the world a hero that can deal with a boogeyman. And that's why the world accepted him so quickly. Hey look, it's Mysterio! He's gonna <laughs> save us! He manipulated people with fear and immediately gave them hope that Mysterio would fix all their problems, so there's no reason to panic or feel afraid. This is why people believe Mysterio's final lie. Spider-Man attacked me for some reason. He has an army weaponized drone, Stark technology. Are you sure you want to commence the drone attack? There will be significant casualties. Do it! Execute them all! That Spider-Man is responsible for all the deaths in London and killed Quentin Beck. And the cherry on top is that Mysterio revealed to the world who Spider-Man really is. But this wasn't just a bitter move from Beck. It created a distraction. Now the world is obsessed about the unmasking. Everyone is talking about Peter Parker, fixated on dissecting every little detail about him. And as a result, no one thinks to question Mysterio because at that point, the truth doesn't even matter anymore. This world around us is preoccupied with celebrity weddings and videos of cats, complicated issues, issues that matter. They take too much focus. They take too much time away from texting and the thousand channels on the satellite dish. For the world, Spider-Man is a mostly new hero, someone who hasn't done something really big to be remembered or idolized just yet. His heroics are mostly street level, nothing that made the front page. I mean, sure, he fought Thanos in space and helped save the universe in Endgame, but so did everyone else. Mysterio fabricated a powerful heroic narrative. And who will no doubt go down in history as the greatest superhero of all time. And when the amazing superhero who saved the universe tells the world that Spider-Man is a killer, people will believe it because they need to believe the alternative is too frightening and people don't want to be afraid. They don't want to consider that Mysterio was lying and that they were all wrong. You can't handle the truth. And with J. Jonah Jameson and other media outlets pushing the story that Spider-Man is public enemy number one, the narrative becomes an easy sell for the public. This is how the truth gets warped, mangled into a lie, which is then repackaged as a narrative. I created Mysterio to give the world someone to believe in. I control the truth. Mysterio is the truth. In No Way Home, Peter will most likely clear his name and expose Mysterio. But we might be at the point of no return for what it means to be a superhero in the MCU, with Mysterio inspiring new pretenders. Steve Rogers was a symbol of the superhero ideal, but that idea has become complicated because it's now subjective. John Walker was embraced as the natural successor to the Captain America mantle, being crowned by the government, marketed as the new Steve Rogers. Blonde hair, blue eyes, stars and stripes. But on the other side of the spectrum, Carly Morgenthau and the Flag Smashers were terrorists. Yet, they were hailed as heroes and liberators by their supporters. They call you Robin Hood. Every day more people love you. And when the idea of what it means to be a hero gets so mangled by the public, the world is going to face an epidemic of pretenders like Mysterio. Even when he'll be exposed, Mysterio's success will provoke extremists to follow his lead. Now think about it. 
Superheroes are the biggest celebrities in the MCU world. They are idolized, elevated to the most elite status in society. They have been turned into a product, sold to the masses. There are musical plays about them, ice cream, toys, an entire system created for the sole purpose of profiting from superheroes. The heroes themselves don't expect to be paid for their heroics, not even royalties. But there is an opportunity here to make a lot of money and become very famous. And there are those who will capitalize on it in a heartbeat. How do you guys make a living? Is there some kind of fun for heroes, or did Stark pay you when he was around? My condolences, by the way. Uh, thank you, but no, it doesn't really work like that. Now, it would be a hard sell for someone to expect payment for saving the world. That's gonna raise some red flags, but nothing stops make-believe heroes from making brand deals, getting paid for the ads, promotion, and influence. And nowadays, everyone has their own brand, their own merch, their own fan base who's willing to spend money on it. And what company wouldn't want to pay millions of dollars to have famous superheroes advertise their products? Not to mention all the morally corrupt corporations that could end up creating their own superheroes just to profit from them. Because these pretenders are not real heroes, they will abuse social media to fabricate their heroics. And as Mysterio has proven, you need collateral damage to make a real splash. We need maximum damage. <laughs> this is gonna cause a lot of casualties. Oh yeah, more casualties, more coverage. I mean, if I'm gonna be the next Iron Man, I need to save the world from an Avengers level threat. And that is a terrifying reality for the MCU. And as we've seen in the previous movies and shows, it is so simple to obtain technology and weapons in this fantastical world. Just look at Adrian Toomes and his team, and what they were able to achieve right under the Avengers' noses. And as we saw in Hawkeye, the Avengers' weapons and gadgets have already found their way on the dark market. An artifact recovered from the wreckage of the Avengers' compound. I mean, seriously, the Avengers have got to take better care of their toys. So these tools are out there. All it takes is for some shady people to use them and create their own superhero narratives. And it's not like anyone is regulating superheroes anymore. The Sokovia Accords have long been forgotten, and the Avengers themselves don't enforce who gets to wear a costume. Superheroes have become the norm, and as their numbers rise, there's no real way to keep track of who's a real hero and who's a pretender, especially not in this murky age of misinformation. But Beck struck a far more important chord. But these days, you can be the smartest guy in the room, the most qualified, and no one cares. Unless you're flying around with a cape or shooting lasers from your hands, no one will even listen. This is also very true. People tend to be influenced by famous people. That's why celebrities appear in all the big commercials. They influence people's opinions. And many times it's not just with materialism, it's about what causes to support or be against. Superheroes are viewed as the most trustworthy individuals on the planet because they are the heroes and people assume that their decisions and choices will always benefit the entire world. Their influence is far reaching. Their words are taken with serious authority. In fact, the public will likely choose to listen to heroes over their political leaders. That's how power can be easily misused. And after seeing how easily Mysterio was embraced as a hero, other villains could see it as an opportunity to achieve their evil schemes and influence the world. This will be the perfect way to do the Thunderbolts or the Dark Avengers in the future, something that the MCU might have already been hinting at, which we talked about in this video. Things are about to get weird. So when they do, we're not gonna need a Captain America. But that's not all. As Mysterio's framing of Spider-Man proves, it's very easy to destroy the validity of superheroes. Pretenders and villains could employ the same tactics to tarnish the legacies of established heroes, turning the public on the heroes while supporting the villains. But the one thing they love more than a hero is to see a hero fail, fall, die trying. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. This means that, in the end, the biggest threat the Avengers will face won't be Thanos or Kang or even Galactus. It's weaponized misinformation. Words are the new weapons. Satellites, the new artillery. TV, news, magazines. I'll have reached and influenced more people than anyone in the history of this planet. This is something we are dealing with in our own world. The age of fake news or conspiracy theories of deep fakes of lies and narratives that are presented as fact, programming the public to believe in only one truth and rage against any other. But I mean, look, I'm not trying to get political here or anything. There's a bunch of crazy stuff on Twitter. Heck, someone made an account for my mustache. And so Mysterio was right. And he sets a dangerous precedent for the future of the MCU. Only time will tell what wins in the end, the truth or the narrative. All right, I admit, this was pretty dense, but there's a lot of fascinating possibilities here. What do you think about all this? Was Mysterio right? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.